Um, in July, um, fellow AHA officers and I went to a leadership conference for the Secular Student Alliance, which is a national um, secular group um, that helps out students. And Brian was there giving a comedy routine, and we thought he'd be great to come to Madison for you all to listen to and watch as well. So that's why he's here today. Um, and he has appeared on NPR weekly news show, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Um, and he can be seen in season three on Inside Amy Schumer on Comedy Central, um, amongst various other comedy routines. So welcome, Brian Babylon. Yay. Yay! Well, uh, I gotta say, shows like this, I'm never really scared of comedy, but I'm scared of shows like this. I'd rather be in a filthy comedy club or the back of a bar at any point in time. This is when I'm my most vulnerable. <sighs> Maybe I need, let me do this, make me feel better. There we go. There we go. I don't know. Right? I'm trying to, trying to, you know, let's call appeasing to the, you know, I'm trying to like give you what you want. Because my real question is, I came up here to ask you guys, how is your personal relationship with Jesus? That's what I really came. This is secretly 45 minutes of Joel Osteen material that I've been working on. It's a, I don't know. I was thinking about, I was like, damn, I don't even have any like Jesus jokes or anti-Jesus jokes, and I was weird. And then I thought, well, I'm going to college, and that's another thing that scares me, talking to young people. But it's enough people my age that I feel better. I can do some Bobby Darren references, and somebody will get that shit in here, you know? You know? But I was like, oh, Jesus, jokes, college. I was like, damn, what if... What if Jesus was on Adderall? What would that be like? <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy? Just busy doing David Blaine magic all through Israel. <laughs> Just busy. <laughs> Cleaning up mangers for free. Just, I made that joke up just for you right now. That was, that's, I don't know. Um, I get, I get nervous doing comedy around young, young people. I heard it was a 12-year-old girl. She had to leave, because that wasn't going to work. That was going to make me totally nervous. Because um, I don't know, kids your age don't know about spankings. Right? You know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what you guys know. And, and the Trump America that we all grew up in. Um, <laughs> there was a time where if you did something bad, not, not, not a abuse, just spankings. You know, you put a belt to a bottom or a thigh or a little hand smack and it was okay. You wouldn't end up on Nancy. It would be, you know, you wouldn't end up on Nancy Green. Uh oh, let's go to plan B. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Plan B, but hold on. <laughs> Let's just pretend this works because I'm a stand-up comic. It's sort of like my whoopee, my security blanket. It does nothing, but it makes me feel better. But I don't know, in the old days, now it's weird. <laughs> it got weird, it got really weird, okay. But in the old days, kids, if you did something bad, your parents would give you a spanking and it was okay. You wouldn't end up on the Nancy Grace show. It was America, right? So I remember I was, uh, went back to Chicago to visit my dad when I moved to LA and he was like, oh man, I'm so proud of you. They got me thinking about your last spanking I gave you. I'm like, what the f how did that even come? It's weird. So he's like, yeah, I'd done something. And I remember my parents got divorced and I was like, 12 when they got divorced, but when he came back a year later to spank me, I was 13. I went through a growth spurt, and when I was 12, it was a cute spanking. You know, I was maybe like five foot two, and my voice hadn't changed, and it was like, he was like, spank, 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 and he was like, are you gonna do it again? And I'm like, no, daddy, I'm not gonna do it again. And he was like, spank, 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 you promise? Yeah, I promise. Lesson learned, I wouldn't do it again for six more months. It was a whole cycle, right? 
fast forward a year later when I'm 13, I was like 5'10". I had one of those high top fades, so I was like six foot one. And my voice had changed. It was a totally different spanking, right? It was spank, spank, spank. You gonna do it again? I'm like, no, dad, I'm not gonna do it again. Come on, Ed, what's going on, bro? It was creepy. That was funny. Uh, I do a lot of race jokes, so buckle up for that. <laughs> I, I, I said, this is like a year ago where I saw white guilt turn into terror right before my eyes. I was at a restaurant during all that Black Lives Matter at the apex of it. I was at a restaurant with two of my white friends and the waiter came and he said, hey, Nice, you know, thanks for coming to the restaurant. Uh, my name is Trayvon, I'll be taking your order, uh, and I'll be right back. And they're like, oh, okay, thanks. And they looked at each other, and they were like, like they seen a ghost, they were like, oh my God. I'm like, what? His name is Trayvon. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's his name. His name's not Beetlejuice or Candyman. You can say, you're not gonna say Trayvon three times and then get caught in the bathroom mirror or some shit for the rest of your life. <laughs> It's funny. <laughs> I got into an argument with this girl uh, because she was saying I was texting her too late, 1.30 a.m., booty call hours. <laughs> She's like, why do you keep texting me so late? And my response was, stay woke. <laughs> <laughs> right? All right, that's my new material. Now let me go into uh, some oldies but goodies. And I, I really need your support, everybody. After this show, you guys are a slice of America that can let me know if my comedy career is legitimate. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, it's been weird. I've been, you know, trying to figure out my life as a lonely, creepy, single comic. It's like sad, but still fun, because you get to come places like this drink free beers, and sleep in weird hotels. Great life, <laughs> but you get lonely. I got uh, dumped three years ago. Still haven't gotten over it. I'm sharing myself with you right now. Got dumped. Same race relationship, it was amazing. Um, doesn't make people mad, but she gave me that conversation that women have like a year in a relationship. She's like, hey listen, I wanna settle down. I wanna get married. And she said this, I want to hear the pitter-patter of little feet. I'm like, Phew. okay, I hear you. I'm hearing you right now. So I went out and I bought her some squirrels. And I let them out on the hardwood floors, right? That's pitter-patter, 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 right? That's hilarious and romantic in the same action. <laughs> she didn't think so. She's like, ah, what the fuck is this, squirrels? You play too much. <laughs> Should I? And she said, kick me out. And she said, I play too much. And that's the part that hurt my feelings. She said, I play too much. I'm like, I play too much? Are you kidding me? I play too much? Do you know how hard it is to get 12 squirrels in a fucking pillowcase at one time? <laughs> I'm squirrel wrangling for you, but I play too much? Like, I'm out there doing Daryl and Merle things from the wall. I'm not a hillbilly, right? I'm fancy. <laughs> then you gotta put little penny loafers and little squirrel feet to give it that pitter-patter, pitter-patter, Dolby surround sound effect, but I play too much? <laughs> Sad. I was heartbroken. You know, maybe my story could help somebody here tonight. You're probably going through it. Where you have like, you get real down on yourself, having pity parties. I had a pity party for myself in my apartment before I moved to LA and Chicago. It was a heat wave, it was hot as hell. And I'm in my apartment alone, sad as hell. And I wasn't sad enough, so I turned the AC off to be more pathetic. Because I was sad. I'm gonna sweat it out, I'm sad. <laughs> Facebook stalking my ex, looking at pictures of happier times, sad, smoking some pot, wasn't sad enough, so I started looking at animal cruelty PSAs. <laughs> so really go get there. And then the most rock, my no mas moment, because everybody had, I don't know if you guys know, if you push black people to the edge, we speak Spanish. But my no mas moment, like no mas, no mas. No more sadness is when I hit the ultimate rock bottom is where I had fruit flies talking shit to me in my face. <laughs> you 
you can't go no lower. When you have flies in your face and shit, that's, you can't go, that's rock bottom. I have fruit flies in my face. And I don't know if you don't know this, but fruit flies are the worst insect in the insect kingdom. They're horrible. They don't sting, they don't pollinate. Don't, they just fly at an erratic flight pattern in your face and say very hurtful things about why your girlfriend left you and how you ain't shit. It's really hurtful, right? I'm like, fuck you, fruit fly. You don't know me. Get out of my face. I'm cursing at a fruit fly and calling fruit fly all type of names. And the fruit fly wasn't a problem, y'all. I was. And learned this for me today. I was a problem because during my pity party, I was so sad, I ordered myself an edible arrangement and had it sent to my house. It was a Groupon, I got two fruit bouquets sent to my apartment. I was eating pineapple tulips. Um, and I left that in my house and went out of town and came back to a fruit fly infestation. Okay, that's not, that's just a setup. That's not even, that's just facts. Started, started getting out, so one of my little young friends told me about, uh, that dating app tenders. I'm on that. I know it's tender, but I'm older, so I put S's on things for no reason. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm on tenders, bumbles, I'm on all that. I like to get my tenders on in private. Because you got people out there who judge your swipes. You know, if you're in public, people look at your swipes and judge you. I'm at the O'Hare Airport. Quality time for some tenders. Swiping left, swiping right, trying to find love. And this lady sitting next to me, and she's fake reading the Reader's Digest, which is like the iPad of the past, right? <laughs> and then she's looking at my Tinder swipe, so I swipe left, not interested, and then all of a sudden I hear, who the hell do you think you are? I'm like, what the fuck, get off my Tinders! Who eavesdropping someone's Tinder swipe? That's so rude, in my opinion. So I got a new way to get a seat next to me empty at the airport when I get my tenders on. It's, uh, it's a simple ingredient. You guys can try it too, it's easy. Try it out here in the, in the what? Student center, the quad, I don't know what your kids call it. If you want an empty space, all you need is some random crumbs. Sprinkle some random crumbs in the seat next to you and watch what happens. People don't fuck with random crumbs, I swear to you. People come like, hey, somebody sitting there, ugh, what is that? Those crumbs look random as hell, mm-mm. Is that a rat picnic? No. People will wipe things down. People don't like to brush off crumbs. It's like Hogwarts. See but those vominos? And this is where things get racy. So buckle up. She told you that I was going to do this. So this is a true story. I'm doing my tenders. I get a match. I don't know how it works. Internet, right? <laughs> get a match on the tenders. Moments later, I get a message from that match. I'm like, oh, wow. So I read the message. No lie. Hey, what's up? She says, you got a nice profile. Then she was like, why don't you send me a dick pic? I'm like, what the fuck? That's the first thing you asked me is a dick pic request? I was so appalled I had to go out, buy some pearls, put them on and clutch them. I'm like, oh, get to, oh, fresh. What? I ain't doing that. I'm not going out. I'm an NPR superstar. I'm not going out on no dick pic scandal, but I'm gonna send something. So I found myself at O'Hare Airport Googling big black dicks in the search. <laughs> Sending something, it's not gonna be me. But you'll be amazed on how hard it is to find the big black dick that you feel represents you and who you are as a person inside, as an individual. I missed my flight. It was like, oh. oh. I had to dip my eyeballs in bleach, get a service dog. It was whack. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys know this, you young people know this, but your internet search history follows you around. <laughs> so I found myself at home with some friends, and it was on my computer, on my Googles, typing around. And then it just popped up. The big black dicks, feeling lucky. And they were like, Babylon, what? hey man, not that there's anything wrong, but why were you searching big black dicks, man? And immediately, without skipping a beat, was like, oh, I was looking for pictures of Clarence Thomas. <laughs> not even a dick joke, just a social commentary of how I feel about the Supreme Court. And I was a misdirect. You just got Ted talked. <laughs> I don't know. 
someone came to me after a show and was like, wow, that was a really good gay joke. I like, oh, well, I don't think that was a gay joke. I think that was just a joke on how Clarence Thomas is horrible. <laughs> like, I, was, I didn't have really any gay jokes. So I started thinking, and I was like, uh, cause I think I was like, you know, since I'm older, like, I was very aware that you weren't supposed to be mean to people just because of a sexual preference. So I remember I was in the mid 80s, I was watching the Winter Olympics with my best friend, and we were watching Scott Hamilton in a shimmery ass outfit on the ice going to town for America. And then my friend Harry was like, man, look at that, man, that dude's gay. I'm like, whoa, 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 man, no, he's not, bro. It's not right, man. Just because he's in those shimmery clothes on the ice like that does not mean his sexual preference. You are crazy, man. And I'm like only eight or nine. And I'm like, I'm gonna tell you what is gay? Major Anthony Nelson from I Dream a Genie. <laughs> I don't know if you millennials know this, look this up. There was a show called I Dream a Genie where there was a grown ass white man who found a genie and all she wanted to do was have sex with him and make magic to make his life better. And every fucking episode, he'd be like, no! <laughs> Gay. <laughs> like, she was willing to have sex with him, blink him, whatever he wanted, sports cars, caviar, and then she was willing, cool with misting herself back into a bottle to be corked to the next time he needed her to do this again, and he was like, no way. <laughs> I mean, I guarantee you there's a gay dude in here like, what? Does I have to have sex with that genie? Let's do it. <laughs> hey. I'm glad I got that joke off at work. <laughs> I get, uh, I love doing stand-up because I, the PC police don't affect me. Maybe the real police, not the PC police. <laughs> I can say whatever I want on the computer, express myself, can't lose my job, I'm already out of work, I'm a stand-up comic. <laughs> like you, this button-down guy, regular white guy that with the button-down, you can't express yourself on the internet the way you want to, man. One wrong word, out of work. Soup line. Like one word will throw people off, like the word moist. <laughs> moist is an uncomfortable word for a lot of people. This is real. Moist is so uncomfortable. I don't know if you guys looked this up, this is real. I don't know if you guys remember this, remember back in the day, you would make a moist chocolate cake with your mom or a moist vanilla cake, Duncan Hines cake box. They took the word moist off the Duncan Hines cake box for a second because it was too controversial. This is real, no lie. Like, remember you would make a moist chocolate cake with your mom and you would lick the bowl in the kitchen and you have all that moist cake mix on your young lips. And it was not even sexual. It was just quality time with your mother. And that's what it was about. But clearly what happened, somewhere in Ohio, somewhere lame like that, Somebody made a cake and they took the cake out the oven to cool off and they were just standing there and they were like, I think I want to fuck this cake. I think I want to fuck this cake. We just y'all just cooling off all moist and shit. And it was getting steamy, then we're just about to fuck this cake. And then they cell phone rang and they snapped out of it. Like, brr, like, oh my God, I can't believe I was gonna fuck this cake. Oh. And then they were embarrassed and they wrote an angry letter to Duncan Hines. Like, dear Duncan Hines, how dare you tempt me with your promiscuous packaging. I almost fucked this cake. My kids almost saw me, you've lost a customer. And then Duncan Hines got there like, what? Stop the presses. One word, throw you off. It's like, uh, like the word retarded. I don't know if y'all remember, this has been off the books 10 years. You can't say that at an intimate dinner party and expect to stay at that intimate dinner party. They'll ask you to leave, right? But I remember the first day I ever even heard the word retarded ever in my life. I was, I'm sorry, but I was at church, right? I was at church. <laughs> and you know, this is before I was enlightened. I was a little boy with my mom. And I remember this day vividly because I was doing some urinal peeing for the first time. <laughs> I don't know if you ladies know this, but it's a rite of passage for little boys when you go from toilet peeing to like urinal peeing, like a big boy in your own space, zipper action, big boy stuff, right? <laughs> man, so I'm in my little urinal peeing, feeling, you know, like a big man. But in the urinal stall next to me, this guy named Weirdo James came and peed next to me. 
But weirdo James pulled his pants all the way down to his ankles and start peeing. And I looked at him like, what the fuck, weirdo James? Man, that's not how this works, bro. <laughs> Man, we're in a urinal action, man. I'm feeling really uncomfortable. I mean, your legs are all ashy. You have on black shoes or white socks. What the fuck, man? <laughs> so I left, zipped my pants up, ran and told my mother, like, OMG, mommy, OMG, mommy, OMG. Now, this is before cell phones and emojis. I made up OMG that day. <laughs> She's like, what, Brian? I was like, mommy, I just saw Widow James' booty in the bathroom. She's like, what? Yeah, mommy. He came in, I'm peeing right here. He came in, peed next to me, but he pulled his pants all the way down to his ankles, started peeing next to me. I saw his booty in the bathroom. And she just was like, oh, okay, it's okay. I'm like, what? I'm expecting her to go crazy. She's like, no, no. And she said this, and I'll never forget. She's like, here's the deal, Brian. Widow James is retarded. I'm like, what's that? And she said it's so sweet and so mid-80s and innocent. She's like, well, sometimes, Brian, people's bodies grow to a certain rate, but their brains don't grow at the same rate as their bodies. So in Widow James's case, his body is 35 years old, but in his mind, he's just a four-year-old little boy. And I was like, bitch, what are you saying to me? This is crazy, right? This is before Harry Potter, kids, okay? This is real life. It wasn't Dementors. This was real shit in my face. I was shell shocked. I'm like, I want to go the kids at the church and they out there playing freeze tag. They try to freeze tag me. I'm like, get the hell out of here with that freeze tag shit, man. She just reeling these streets, man. People are retarded out here, man. You could be next, bro. <laughs> Wake up, man. I was just disturbed. So I'm driving home and uh, I'm in the back seat with my mother. And she's driving. I was like, hey, mommy. She's like, what? I was like, I want to be 22 retarded. She's like, what's that, Brian? I'm like, well, I want to be old like you, but I want to be 22 in my head for the rest of my life. She's like, Brian, that's not how retarded works. You just don't hop off and choose your retarded age. You just don't get to choose what age you stop growing mentally. I'm like, are you serious? Oh, I don't know anything. So fast forward, when I turned 40 years old, I found myself in my filthy ass apartment eating some circus peanut marshmallow candy. And I was watching porno on a laptop, but at the same time playing video games and watching Dragon Ball Z on the iPad. And I realized at that moment, I'm like, oh shit, I did it. I'm fucking twitted, right? I called my mother like, mommy, uh, I've been doing this like for a decade. What are you talking about? That was, that was for real. <laughs> True story. I don't know. I'm glad I, I'm glad I get to, uh, I used to work for a WBZ radio station for like eight years. So it was stink because I had, it, had to go to work. That's crappy. Even though it was a radio show, you have to still go and show up, which is garbage. Um, and then also it's like, we don't live in Europe, so we have like, what, two weeks off, which is like slave conditions. I mean, I'm, and I'm telling you that, right? A vacation day, so it was hard making two weeks spread, so I had to come up with new ways to get off work um, to do comedy shows. So I started laying racist booby traps in my cubicle and go to work, I mean go to lunch and come back appalled. So I would leave like a confederate flag with a slice of watermelon, a mean racist note, and I go to lunch, then I come back like, oh, what the hell is this? Go back to Africa, what the fuck, hell no! Face me, face me! And then I go to HR like, I can't work in these conditions. Three weeks extra vacation bank. That's how, <laughs> game in the system. And you gotta, be, you gotta be black. Whatever your race is, you just run with it. Latino, leaf blower, enchilada, Arizona State flag, tablecloth, uh, Asian people, math homework, air grow. Get, get cliche with it. <laughs> Middle Eastern person, shitty cell phone, Play Doh. Fucking go crazy. White guy, go to work. I want you to put a full 40 in, charge it to the game. That was, I don't know, that's, that was mean. That was mean. I don't know, I, uh, I don't do a lot of organic 
jokes because I know my fan base. So I'm like, I like, to, I like to make fun of organic stuff, right? But I'm gonna say this, if you buy an apple for over $7, you're an asshole, right? Come on, we can say that, right? Come on, $7? It's crazy. I don't care if that apple was watered with white baby tears. It should not cost seven dollars. It's getting out of control. Whole Foods, gentrifying neighborhoods. I saw this black lady with her daughter at Whole Foods, and she said, um, "Artisanal Washington, get over here." I'm like, "Are you kidding me? That's her name." All right, I made that one up. All right, that was, I mean, all right, I made that one, that was stupid. No, I, I don't know, I just, cause I, I, was, I was over this girl's house and she was, uh, she was making waffles the next morning. So clearly what happened the night before was waffle worthy, okay, whatever, no, no. So she's making waffles and she has all the fixings on the table and then I see she has, um, a bottle of Vermont organic maple syrup, right? The good stuff, right? I look at it, $48. I'm like, what the fuck? In these tough Obamacare times, you spending $50 on some syrup? Like, you should buy Miss Butterworth's any day over Vermont organic maple syrup, right? Because Miss Butterworth will talk to you the morning after you do a whole bunch of crazy drunk shit to make you feel better about your life. She's like, good morning, baby. I'm like, hey, Miss Butterworth, I had a crazy night. I know, sit down. You was kind. You was important. You was smart. Whatever. Miss Butterworth to help. She lives in your cabinet with Uncle Ben. It's called residual income. Come on. So we start arguing about the organic stuff. And um, I go in her medicine cabinet and I see she has some organic roll-on deodorant, right? And I'm thinking, first of all, roll-on deodorant feels weird to put on anyway, because it feels like it's a midget licking your armpits before you go to work. So it just feels weird to put it on. I don't know, in my opinion, right? So we're all right, going back and forth, blah, 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 and you know, that just turned like to make up the breakup fight, right? So long story short, this <sighs> got this might I don't know. I had one of those moments of I'm nervous to tell you this because we but we're adults, fuck it. So we're French kissing and <laughs> it goes past French kissing, right? So we're going to action and then we're having consensual sex and then she says she's like, Oh my god, this feels great. She's like, Are you wearing a condom? I'm like, Yeah, I'm wearing a condom. It's organic. <laughs> I got into the biggest argument after I did that joke at this one college where it's just this girl came to me and was like, um, hey, that didn't sound too like legit, that joke. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I had no clue. She was like, because um, if it wasn't consensual that you didn't have a condom on, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, ugh, like, are you SVUing me right now? Because like, I'm a little nervous, like maybe I did something bad. And she just gave me my, a mom look like, oh God, Brian. <laughs> she, she just gave me a mom like, oh, Brian, what did you do? I am not that old. I know. Oh, I'm old. I'm old. ancient. Uh, I was talking about that, that same race relationship that I was in that got dumped out of, and I hurt my feelings. Then I drifted back into like jungle fever antics, where I would go out and look for packs of Megans to date. <laughs> you know, wherever, they, wherever a pack of Megans graze, the Abercrombie and Finches or the Lululemons, wherever they're at, that's where I'm at. <laughs> You don't want to scare them off because you packs of Megan scare easily. <laughs> the Uber out surge, pew, gone, right? So I found what works, what softens my look is if I get a Starbucks cup. <laughs> right. Have you ever seen a black man with a Starbucks cup? How non threatening he looks immediately with a pumpkin spice latte, right? You go from like purse snatcher to Theo Hugs, we're like, bow, relax, it's pumpkin spice. <laughs> 
But you gotta remember to keep the lid on the cup. It's very important. Keep that lid on that cup. Because without the lid on the cup, you're just a well-dressed black man asking for spare change. So keep the lid on the cup. Bloop. I'm not homeless. Wow. So I would see that pack of Megan's and then I would do my Megan sex call to see which Megan would get her attention. I'll do it for you. It's like this. It's like... Ba do da da do da da do da la do da. <laughs> it works. I don't know. How are we doing on time? Yes. I don't know. I, I've been thinking like uh, for myself, like. Um, like, if, do, do, like, do I want to get married? Or I have a friend like, hey man, you should get married, bro. I'm like, ugh. Like, at this point, how many people are married here? How many people are in relationships? All right, all right. Whoever you're with, stay in that relationship. How many people are single? Make some noise. They're... Blue hat? Single. People on these ships, stay in those relationships because there's nothing for you in these single streets but me and blue hat. So. <laughs> Cause I, you know, I, cause I, you know, I love my freedom, but sometimes you get lonely and you, hit, you miss those little things like spooning. I miss spooning. Big spoon, little spoon, ladle. I don't care. Get in here, spoon me. <laughs> I miss spooning so much that I go to music festivals and spoon people who pass out from too many drugs. <laughs> Easy pickings. <laughs> Uh, unconscious by the food court, cell phone dying, like, oh, you need me right now, you gotta get in there. Because <laughs> if you touch them, that's lightweight sexual assault. So you can't touch them. So it's like a weird game of operation where you can't touch the edges, but you gotta get in there. Lonely. <laughs> Lonely. I don't know. I, uh, I realize when you go, when you're like an older guy and you're at the club, and when you, when you have to go to the club, it's like the worst thing ever because you're just an old dude in the corner and you're like drinking a drink and you're just nervous to talk to girls that are just young or just out of your league. And you end up sounding like Bane from Batman. Like you're in a drink like, oh my God, she's gorgeous. Uh. And it's a sad thing. It's sad. It's unbelievably sad. I, um was talking about to my friend about, she was like, so when, when did you realize that you want to do stand-up comedy? And I was like, oh God, I remember that day vividly. And this is, this is when I was trying to find, figure out what I was doing, and so I was substitute teaching in Harvey, Illinois. This is a true story. And this is gonna, this is graphic. <laughs> graphic. <laughs> Graphic. I'm telling you now, if you leave, it's okay. If you don't, graphic. <laughs> so I'm in, sub I'm in Harvey, Illinois, and I'm a substitute teacher. The best substitute teacher for Harvey. I mean, oh, Harvey, Illinois, it's like Memphis, Tennessee, and Chicago at the same time. You know, so it's like, you know, long, low income, black community. And there, I'm a hero because I took my shirt and my pants and I wear shoes and I cut my hair. So I'm like, wow, this guy's amazing. So no teacher experience. I got to be like a substitute teacher and my good friend who was a teacher for the um, learning, um, the um, learning disability kids. She had like eight kids that were awesome, right? They were eight boys. She had a teacher's aide and she never missed a day. And then one day she did miss she asked Mr. B, who was me, and the kid's like, hey, what's the B stand for? I would say business as usual, sit down. That's what I was saying. <laughs> so she was like, hey B, I'm going, I gotta go to this, uh, to this wedding and funeral. I, you're the only guy I trust. I'm like, hey, I got you, don't worry about it. She had like a teacher's aide, and then she had another dude whose only job, your tax dollars pay for this dude to come here and take this kid who was in a wheelchair to the bathroom. 
That was his job, right? I'm like, cool. I had my plan. I had my Dragon Ball Z lesson plans already. That's what we're gonna do. Talk about life and how Goku and family values, all that shit. It was gonna be great. So the night before, I'm partying, hanging out, because I'm a sub, no pressure. And I'm thinking like, damn, my whole wheelchair bathroom guy comes to work. Guess who didn't come to work the next day? <laughs> All right, so I see this, I'm like, ugh, you know, and I'm getting, I'm going through it. So, you know, they're like, hey, Mr. B, we gotta go to the bathroom. I'm like, all right, guys, let's watch one more episode. Cause I'm thinking like, surely wheelchair bathroom guy's gonna come to, to work, he did not. So I take the guys down to the bathroom, you know, and I'm, I love Timmy, he was cool. We were like kicking it, making jokes and I roll him into the bathroom stall and I'm like, well, I've never done this. I don't know anything about, you know, how to do this. And it's weird how tight a handicapped stall gets when it's you, a kid, a wheelchair, and no cocaine. It's weird how tight, because <laughs> handicapped stalls are just luxurious when you got coke, you know what I'm saying? But if no coke, they get tight as fuck. So I'm like, oh! So, I run. Me, asshole, I roll on up to the, to the toilet. I just, all right, man, Psst, do you, man, respect you, man. Just, and then he, he's like, I look, and he's looking at me like, come on, dude, you know, come on, I'm in the wheelchair. Ugh. So I unbuckle him, and I prop him up uh, on the wall. I pull his pants down, and I realize he has a pull-up on. I'm like, that's pretty smart, you know, pull a pull-up down. And then I find myself on my knees in the bathroom, still no cocaine, right? And, and I'm like, you know what, man? Psh, just pee, do whatever you gotta do, man. Just, if you miss, you, you miss. We did this together. I'm giving him a positive black role model pat on the back. You know, like, hey man, do your thing. I don't hear anything. Like, okay. So I turn around and at the corner of my eye, I see his little waist and then I see the, this other, Thing protruding out of his body. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? So I looked around, this kid on Jesus, on black Jesus, on everything, had the biggest dick that I had ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> it was it was crazy. It was Dragon Ball Z. It was like, unbelievable. I was like, what the fuck is this, man? So I'm like, oh my God. Still, no cocaine nowhere to be found, right? So I'm like, all right, man, you know what? Fuck it, who cares? Let's, let's just get out of here. So I pull up his pull up. And here's where the shit gets graphic. And this kid's humongous dick got caught on the fucking pull-up. I don't know if you ever know this. Take this one thing from this whole convention. You should never feel heavy horse cock meat and diaper elasticity in the same sensation in your life. It was crazy, right? So I was trying to like, I was like, oh my God, I need a life change. And I'm like, I'm like trying to flick the dick meat into the diaper. And I'm like, oh my God, my life is gonna get better. So it's like I'm playing like a shitty game of ball in the cup and I'm losing. I'm like, what the fuck? So I like get it in there and the girth, Pulls the diaper down, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to an open mic. There's no punchline to that. It was just how I started doing stand-up. Um, <laughs> well, I'm going to end on this joke. It's about drugs. Um, I, made, I was making a lot of bad decisions. Uh, after that breakup, smoking, drinking, boozing. And I remember I staggered into a Walgreens drugstore. You ever been to a store and you voyeuristically look at the person in front of you, what they're buying? I'm like, Keen, why well, salad? What an asshole. You ever done that? Like, <laughs> so I saw this guy at the Walgreens drugstore and he only had two things that he was gonna buy. It was a pregnancy test and some rolling papers. <laughs> And I'm like, whoa, that's gangster. Like, is this guy going home? Like, here, pee on that, I don't care what happens. <laughs> that, was, that was me, that was actually me. That was, I did that. that was, that's why I gotta cut back on the dope. So I'm gonna stop smoking weed with magicians first. That's my thing. I like to get high with magicians. Don't judge. It's fun. You get high with magicians. It's always fun. You never know what's going to happen. You might get some doves or a burrito. It's crazy. Who knows, right?
<laughs> Sometimes they take shit too far and they play too much. You're getting high with a magician, smoking, and then you look up, the weed smoke is gone out of your mouth, and the magician's on the other side of the room, like, Psst, hey, you looking for this? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? Stop doing that, man! I invite you over here to look at these pregnancy test results, okay? We have a situation we need to make disappear. Not, not weed smoke. <clears throat> Thanks, man. Thank you very much. You guys have been great. Adios. Thank you so much.